to Tradespoon. My name is Vlad Karpel. I'm CEO and founder of Tradespoon. And today we're going to have a weekly strategy roundtable discussion where we talk about Tradespoon tools, current market conditions, and any questions you might have about Tradespoon membership. For those of you who are new, welcome. This is my brief bio. I was Executive Vice President, Head of Technology at Option Express from its inception through 2007. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the Tradespoon subscribers because of you I'm able to do what I enjoy professionally, managing and trading my own money. I've been doing that for over 15 years. Mentoring and teaching Tradespoon subscribers how to trade stock and options. And finally, I have a master's degree in computer science. Disclosures, trading stock and options involve risk and are not suitable for everyone. You must be aware of the risk and be willing to accept it in order to invest in current market conditions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA nor SEC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level for general education information purposes only. Please consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. All right, so before we talk about uh, trading system, let's talk about current market conditions. Looking at the spiders, let's look at the nine months chart. Yeah. So we are right at the 310 level. Uh, we touched it yesterday. Still, the recent rally, the break, clear breakout to the 52-week highs, on anticipation that there will be U.S. and China agreement, and then this is a key driver. Granted, there is uh, earnings, strong earnings. You know, 80% of the company that reported beat the analyst estimates. So, the earnings momentum and the anticipation of the agreement is driving the market to the upside. Market has been resilient to the negative news, so definitely. Uh, I think the seasonal chart, if you look at the seasonal chart and if you're following the, our market commentary for the past, I would say, a month, um, I've been saying that uh, right now there's 80% correlation. So it's a pretty strong correlation between the current price action and the historical prices. So spiders, basically, we can get a pullback. You know, I would anticipate at least in the next couple of weeks, some kind of a shallow pullback, maybe a 2%, maybe as much as 5%, uh, but then continue market going higher uh, till the end of the year. Very high correlation. Right now, model basically shows that three out of four predictions point to the downside. So market is overextended. I think 310 is a strong overhead resistance. It might take some time to break through that resistance. And support is around 301, 300 level. So those are the key supports that, as an aggressive trader, I would uh, consider. Um, if you're a long-term investor, you know, 50-day moving average and buy on any pullbacks uh, if you have a long-term perspective. Other important indicators, I would keep an eye on dollar. Dollar is in correction territory. That's what fuels the rally. We are back at the ski 98 level, uh, uh, facing 50-day uh, uh, moving average. So right, uh, trading up against 50-day moving average. I think it's a short-term bounce from the sell-off, and there will be and probably another leg down, potentially retesting 96 on the U.S. dollar. Uh, Treasury is another uh, key indicator in terms of the rally. Uh, treasuries are continuing to move lower, going back to the july august level where the initial rally happened but you can definitely see that uh, treasury prices are retreating and the treasury yields are going higher and that's benefiting between dollar and the treasury that's benefiting all the cyclical sectors so i would look uh, also look at the defensive names like um, uh, utilities and consumer staples and defensive sectors they are also in the correction territory, right? Two standard deviation move on the utilities. Uh, so definitely that fuels the rally in cyclicals. Uh, you can see semiconductors are leading the market. I would keep an eye on semiconductors. As long as they continue to rally, that what will fuel the rep, propel the market. That could be a forward leading indicator. Financial sector is benefiting on higher interest rates. Uh, you can see XLF uh, broke through the 52-week high, continues to move higher. Uh, XLI, industrials, also broke through the 52-week high, continues to go higher. Uh, so technology, semiconductors, industrials, financials, 
are your leading indicators and energy materials they are uh, kind of uh, following the leading in the following the leading sectors all right um, so how do you trade in the current market conditions we have three different systems that we offer at tradespoon i'm going to talk about all three of them before i jump into that very important to always from trading psychology point of view i encourage you to open up an account at yellow town if you haven't done that so it's a sister company of tradesmen it's a free site there's not a lot of resources that talks about trading psychology and that was the original reason why i'm spending a lot of time and energy on trading psychology i still believe that uh, we can you can give very high signals high probability of success but they're never 100 percent so whether they're 75 percent accurate that's what we our goal at trades going to be 75 percent accurate but 25 percent is um, uh, when you have to make sure that the when the trade goes against you overall your portfolio is still growing and those losing trades do not outweigh the winning trades you don't have emotionally attachment to the uh, when the trade goes against you, you don't cut your winners short you don't let your losing trades go indefinitely so these are the different mental strategies that we are providing so last wednesday of every month we have dr Maneker who joins us he's a clinical psychologist and also a professional trader so i encourage you to sign up for this webinar uh, it takes place every uh, last Wednesday of every month. And you can see the recordings, recordings also, they're available for everybody. Uh, Dr. Maneker and I are leading them and uh, you can see them here. So trading psychology is definitely important. I would invest in that. Uh, after trading psychology, you have to not only to be become self-aware and realize when you trade on impulses or you trade on biases or you have fear of messing up, missing out on the rally or you have a fear of regret that you know you will not make as much money as the stock market moves uh, so all of those emotions you need to be self-aware of them and document them in your trading journal so trading journal is very important that doc has documents your trading plan um, you should uh, Put down not only what you feel, not, not only only what you see in the market and what you trade, but also document, uh, label your emotions with one word and document them when you trade and see if you can find certain price patterns. I encourage you to enter questions. Uh, again, I'm going to have to leave maybe in the next 20 minutes. So I, I do want to answer any questions uh, if you have before I leave, uh, we have some uh, uh, family issues that I have to attend and I wasn't able to switch. Uh, so anyway, um, trading plan is important, documenting your decisions, documenting your one word, labeling your emotions. Um, you need to know, uh, have an outlook on the market. You know, is the market trading sideways like we had in the past six months? Is the market are in a, is it a continuation of the bull market like we had in the past couple of weeks or are we in a recession or in bear market so you have to have that opinion um and uh, concentrate on things that you can control and not things that you cannot control so you, you don't really have a control when us will sign an agreement with china or will they sign an agreement right you can only speculate you can uh, very important to be prepared for both events um, uh, but um, uh, important to uh, concentrate on the things that you can control and you can control how much cash you have in account so portfolio allocation is important portfolio drawdown how many positions you have at any given point and um, uh, look at the when you structure your trade look at the probability of success whether in using implied options volatility implied options volatility i often use it in a live trading room or you use stock forecast toolbox or seasonal charts, some of the tools we have at TradeSpoon. Every time you trade, doesn't matter what the system you're using, you should ask yourself, what is the probability of trade? Trading is based on probabilities. At any given point, I can, you can estimate what with high certainty where, where the market or where the stock will trade in what range, right? You also have a probability, will the stock going higher or lower in one day or in one month? So, so all of these events, have probability so whatever system you use you should always ask and demand from the provider what is the probability of success 
And then once you have probability of the event, you need to structure your trade that has favorable risk versus reward based on these probabilities. Very similar to a game of poker, right? When you play poker, there's a lot of uncertainty in the game of poker. You can be the best player and still lose. Uh, but every time you dealt cards, you know what the probability that you're going to win. And then based on the how much money you have to risk, you would have to ask yourself a question if it makes sense to stay in the in that trade or in that game. So, so there's a lot of similarities between trading and game of poker or any other social uh, interactions between you know bulls and bears or players. We talked about game theory, uh, where there is uncertainty in in the outcome of the events. Right? Trading is not similar to chess game, right? In chess, it's more structured. I mean, there's definitely uncertainty, but there's less uncertainty. Usually there's certain openings, chess openings, there's certain end games, there's certain middle game, uh, and it's very structured. Uh, trading and poker, there's a lot more uncertainty and a lot more art that has to, and psychology that has to go into uh, trading. All right, so let's talk about uh, then tools, right? So we, we mentioned probability on spiders. When I say three out of four predictions are lower, we have uh, accuracy, right? Can't really see it here, but there's an accuracy that tells you when we have a symbol signal that stock market is overbought and it will be lower, what is the accuracy? So right now it's about 80% accuracy. So there's about 80% accuracy that in the next couple of weeks we will see some kind of a shallow pullback just like we usually have you know the first couple of weeks of November right that's the seasonal chart it will be shallow we don't try to estimate the magnitude of that sell-off it's very hard to predict the magnitude of the sell-off when you're looking into 40 50 days right or two weeks but you can estimate the direction so right now 80 percent chance that the market there will be correction in the next couple of weeks I think that those will be pull shallow. So that's a seasonal chart. And uh, the other tool that we offer is TradeSpoon uh, Stock Forecast Toolbox. So Stock Forecast Toolbox, same thing. It, it's optimized for short. You can make short-term prediction. You can make long-term predictions. I think the 10-day predictions are, are more accurate than the longer-term prediction. This is more of a momentum model. Uh, so it shows that spiders are still in uptrend for the next 10 days. For the next few days, you can see uh, an up the, uh, uptrend and it gives you probabilities. So there's 60% per chance probability that once the market reaches the low, 30 or 785 is the predicted low, which was posted yesterday at 6 p.m., uh, that the market will close above that level. So if you're a day trader or if you're a short-term trader, ideally right now, this is the opportunity if you want to go along the market, you do it at 307.85. Yesterday, when the predicted high was 309.71 or similar to that level, the model basically said uh, you're probably a little bit late and the market is overbought. It makes sense not to buy at 309.71. If you want to go along, it makes sense to buy at 307.85 because the current trader is bullish. So any type of pullbacks, if you're an aggressive trader, day trader or short-term trader, this is an opportunity to go along. So these are the key tools. And then in terms of the, uh, the buckets of services that we're providing, the first one is a live portfolio and trading room. So if you want to uh, follow uh, Scott's and I portfolio that we trade, we have different services. So if you have time to during the day to look at the, be part of the live trading room or look at the SMS messages, we provide you with a lead trading circle. So lead trading circle is the ability to participate in the live trading room. We have morning bell and closing bell, the last, the first hour and the last hour of trading. And we have traders log, right? So every time I trade, you can actually see which trades are currently that, you know, I entered 360 today, um, the gut filled and um, FD. I um, put in an order to close uh, uh, half a position of at AppD. Right? And you can actually see, you know, if you want to look, see more and actually see what are the trades are for JEC, so you can actually see all the trades that I'm doing with JEC. Or same thing if you want to see 
Uh, at what point did I enter FB? You know, I entered it at 364, uh, and today I closed half of it at four dollars, right? So I was able to capture roughly 35 cents, so 10 percent profit in uh, in relatively short period of time. So that's I closed half of the position. Uh, so traders log allows you to to have real time access every time there is a trade. You can see the timestamp, and you also get access to alerts. So every time there is a fill on AppV or JC, you get an SMS message that informs you that, you know, I placed a trade, I, I either got filled or I got canceled, or, you know, or it's an open order. So that's, um, and this is, you can see both, some of these are day trading, some of these are shorter term trading. It could be a week, it could be a quarter. Uh, the next level of services, if you don't have time to trade every day uh, and you just want to kind of trade you know once a week then we have two portfolios one is a robo investor portfolio this is a stock portfolio it consists of 20 stocks usually every week other week will give you two stocks so we have four trade ideas a month so every month we provide you with four stock ideas and you can build portfolio it fluctuates anywhere between 10 and 20 stocks you can see performance of these trades it's same thing. Every time I trade, you get an alert, SMS alert, and you get email, and you have access to all the open orders, the portfolio, and then different tools that goes with the Robo Investor to help you. You know, we talked about seasonal chart, uh, we talked about stock focus list, so different, you know, JC, so different stocks that are kind of on our watch focus list, and uh, this allows you to prepare for your trades over the weekend. You, these trades are usually recommended on Sunday. Everybody have, usually have time on Sunday to prepare for the trade and you can place your trade on Sunday or when the market opens on Monday, but it's less time sensitive if you have time to build this portfolio. Think of it as, you know, optimized 401k or basket uh, or your own ETF that you're building. So that's a robo investor. You can overlay it with options if you want extra income and you have a larger portfolio, if you buy, you know, at least 100 shares of these stocks. I would encourage you to consider cover calls, right, uh, or colors to help you uh, generate additional income. Uh, and the other portfolio, we have premium portfolio. Premium portfolio, I actually trade option spreads. You can see all of the trades. Every time I trade, you will see the winning trades, the losing trades. Uh, it's about 75% accuracy. Across all of our portfolios, all of our signals, we're looking for 75% accuracy. 75% accuracy basically gives, you know that three out of four trades are gonna, three out of four signals will be successful based on historical performance. Doesn't guarantee the future performance, but at least over a long period of time, it's around 75% accuracy. So that means your trading plan, what you can control is to make sure that one trade that goes against you, it's not 100% losing, 100% losing trade, right? Because if this trade is 100% losing, trade, then it will take you three or four trades to recover. So if you have one losing trade, then it's okay. You have three winning trades and then your portfolio, overall portfolio will continue growing. So that's a trading plan. That's the philosophy at TradeSpoon, how we trade. Um, it's okay to have, you know, some trades you can be only 10% accurate, right? But then, you know, your re return on capital will be much higher in order for you to generate a profitable portfolio. Right, you see it on CNBC. Uh, people talk about um, unusual options activity. Unusual options activity, it could, it's a sound strategy. It can work, but again, you have to make sure that one winning trade where you make 400% will probably be, you know, for each successful trade, you might have three, four unsuccessful or five unsuccessful trades, right? Because you're buying these out of the money options, you know, for you know. I don't know, 50 cents, 20 cents, and you want the stock to move, you know, at least by four or five percent. So different strategies, the work, but they all boils down to two important things that you need to ask yourself. What is the probability of success? How often will I be successful in that trade? And then what is my return on capital? You got to think about these two uh, parameters. Um, so that's um, live portfolios, premium, live trading room, and robo investor. Any questions? Uh, 
Uh, Genevieve, I use, so the question was where do we, so the, the elite circle, right? The elite circle is synchronized with the trading block. Trading block. Uh, full disclosure, I'm an investor in trading block. So you can read uh, the disclosures, but I trade through trading block. So if you want third party integrations, uh, trading block is a broker dealer that I'm using to auto execute, right? You have to auto for auto execute, it's 35 cents per contract. Still pretty competitive. Uh, well, now considering most of the companies do uh, just a small fee, no commissions. So this is for auto execute service. Uh, so I would consider a trading block. I don't know if they have zero commissions. This is something you have to ask. I don't think they do yet, uh, but that's where I trade. All right, uh, I don't think there are zero commissions yet. Uh, so please explain weekly trade service. So, okay, so the, this is the first bucket of services is the live trading room. The third bucket of service, what do I trade in live trading room, right? Where do I get these signals? I get the signals from three, I try to call it signal services, right? These are the services that tells you exactly what the, not exactly, but where you should consider buying we're entering the trade where you should consider the exit in the trade and probability of success. So we have weekly trader, active trader, and monthly trader. Weekly trader, basically every week, you know, last week on Sunday, we send an email and SMS message to all the weekly trader subscribers telling them, uh, here's the three bullish and three bearish trade ideas. So AMAT signal was published on November 4th, right? On November 4th, you come in and you basically have a choice uh, do you enter the trade at 54.70 or do you enter a trade at 55.46? Strategy A and strategy B. Strategy A, this is based on predicted low. If you waited for 54.70 since November 4th, you would not be in the trade, right? November 4th. So we never reached 54.70. So you would not enter the trade. If you did it at 55.46, this is previous close, 55.46, we did reach 55.46. At some point you would be up um, 55.46, 56, so about a dollar. So 2% move on the underlying stock. And actually, I don't trade all the signals, but I did trade this in the live trading room. Actually, full disclosure, I still have a trade. So, um, so in this instance, I actually traded. I, 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 options allow you to reduce your cost basis. So instead of buying at $55, if I actually want to buy it at 54 and a half, I cannot do it with a stock, but I can do it with the option, right? So I did buy 53 and a half, 54 and a half call spread. I bought it for 85 cents and I closed it half of it 96, half of it I'm waiting for 98 cents. So risk 85 cents, reward about 13 cents, so 20% profit. So I'm, usually on these trades, I look anywhere from 20 to 40% profit, either you know, in a couple of days or you know, in a few weeks, it depends on if it's a monthly trader service or weekly trader service. So this is kind of a perfect example of the weekly trader. Uh, depends how aggressive you are as a trader. Not an aggressive, maybe not the right term, but um, it depends on where you are on the risk spectrum, right? Let's see, where's my risk spectrum? Risk spectrum, okay. All right, so you have a risk spectrum and some people are more, uh, like to take more risks and people are less, uh, you know, risk averse. So based on that, you will, you will decide whether you wanna wait for the predicted low, that's strategy A, or you wanna buy at the previous session close. In this example, be Friday's close. If you're waiting for a predicted low, you will trade less often. This is an example where you would not be in the trade, but your percentage, percentage of winning trades will be higher, right? Because you're buying at the discount. You're looking at the probability of success, you buy, you usually it's a, you know, one standard deviation move. Stock has to move, you know, outside of the, you know, mean to find uh, and it will revert more often than not. So this is something you need to be consistent and decide for yourself. Do you always wait for predicted low or do you just always buy at previous session close? Both strategies are sound. 
you know, there are advantages for one versus the other. In this case, the target gain is 2.5% stop loss, 2.5% target gain, 2.5%, holding time anywhere to two to five days. You can trade it with stock. You can see in my example, I use option spreads. So that's weekly trading. And again, if you want to leverage your portfolio, you can trade with options, right? Instead of option spread, you could just buy 53 and a half call, right? I chose to um, uh, reduce my cost basis, so I did the spread, but you can do a single option also. So that's an example of the weekly services. Uh, let's see, active trader, similar structure every day instead of every week this is the model that's optimized for one day prediction one to two days so every day you get three bullish three bearish trade ideas today crm again 550 158.31 is the predicted low or 159.50 those prices came from the 10-day stock for a to us we predicted 158.31 so we're suggesting to Subscribers, wait for 158.31. Let's see, that hit 158.31. I think it did. Today, November 8th. Right. I think it did 158.31. CRM. November 8, 158.31, came close. No, it did not hit 158.31. So again, if you wait for 158.31, we haven't reached that point. We were at 158.91. So you would not be in this position. If you did it at the open price, when the market opened, 159.25, you would be up right now by 60 cents, which is 30. 40 basis points, right? Usually I look for half a percent gain. So active trader, same thing. Uh, if you wait for predicted low, you'll have more winning trade than losing trades and target gain 1%, stop loss 1%. I do not trade uh, weekly service. We don't to trade that. We do give done options for these services, right? All these services come with options. So instead of buying CRM, 100 shares of CRM would cost you $15,000 of buying power. You can buy one contract for $3.30 and it's only $330. Not only, but it's $330. So you do get a lot of leverage and we do provide you with options. Very common question, Vlad, what if, what if it doesn't reach that price level? What do you do? Well, we do give you, you know, maybe 10 basis points, maybe 20 basis points on using the underlying stock as your comfort level, right? Standard deviation of error where you can consider an entry price. In live trading room, I usually find support. If I see support, clear support uh, on the stock, then maybe I'll pay a little bit, bit extra. So that's active trader, weekly trader, and monthly trader is similar fashion. Every week we provide three bullish and three bearish ideas. LLY, actually same thing. I, I did trade LLY. So full disclosure, I'm in the, in this trade, bought it at 368, trades at about 375, so same level as of right now. But the idea is the same thing. You either buy at 112.51, in this case, it's the same. So if you bought it at 112.51, right now you'll be slightly up by 50 cents and you have both stock and options. Don't think for the question. Osama, yes, I will try. Usually, sometimes I, I'm not very consistent, so I agree, but I will try to put notes in terms of whether I fully close the position or partial. What is the difference between Active Trader and the premium service? Uh, Active Trader is, uh, you trade on your own, right? Active Trader, we just tell you, you have three bullish, three bearish trade ideas, and it's up to you to decide which stocks you're trading. Premium service is actually, where you have access to my portfolio and you get email and SMS message of the trades that I actually make. All right, any other questions? All right, guys, unfortunately, I do have to cut this uh, demo short. Again, I apologize. I have some uh, family emergency that I have to attend. 
So have a great weekend. Enjoy your time with your family. Uh, keep an eye on the market in terms of uh, where the defensive sectors are and where the cyclical sectors are. I think towards the end of the year, we will follow the seasonality and this would be kind of a year-end rally that I think will continue on. The only thing that can cause market sell-off, I, I think at this point, would be some kind of geopolitical events such as you know, we don't sign an agreement with US China, you know, escalation, escalation of the tariffs. Instead of removing the tariffs, we're gonna add the tariffs that are due you know, on December 15th. So sometime between now and December 15th, there's an assumption that there's a US-China agreement and these tariffs will be rolled back. All right, guys, thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend and, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you.